Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Marmoset. We're back, new recording session for Kerbal Space Program. So this is the plane, hello Julian. This is the plane we were playing around with previously and basically we were trying to get above 18,000 meters to do an observation. Turns out that that's a bit hard with these planes. Um, we're limited on parts and bits, so we can't really get that high. So I tried various other variations. So this is the 1A. Um, where you've got a strut in the section. Uh, didn't work so well, I just didn't like the look of it. Then we got the, the two, where we got the engines narrowly, much more narrower design, uh, more fuel, emptied that fuel tank, put more in here. Had to go with the t sec t s tail section like this because the engines was washing against, engine wash was hitting the tail section and we weren't going anywhere. That didn't get high enough. Then we looked at the Explorer 3, where we've got three engines at the back. Um, and extra control surfaces and more fins and more wing area that didn't get high enough then we've got this one the RJ this has got a rocket engine rig in it it's essentially a set of girders and a rocket engine it flips out the sky there's no way I can get it to balance it won't even take off then we've got the TJ so the Explorer yes that is a solid rocket engine <laughs> And, and some other bits and pieces. Um, I could not, for the life of me, get this thing to balance. <laughs> it just kept flipping over as soon as it got anywhere down the runway. Then we got the W. Now, here's the main thing. This is the Wheatley-class engines. We I and spent a bit of cash and unlocked some of the extra science bits, which enabled me to upgrade the bigger turbofans rather than the little um, jets we've got. That one I was reasonably pleased with, but in the end... So we've got the W1A, which is basically just an even shorter version of it. That has a tendency to flip out of the sky. So what we ended up with is the Explorer W2, which has a pair of Wheatley engines. It's got a lot of fuel. It really doesn't need anywhere near quite that much fuel. I've got 42 minutes worth of fuel, but it won't get high enough. <laughs> uh, simply a matter of fact, I don't have the wing area, the engine types, the rest of it to get high enough. What I can, however, do is this one. Douglinson's pitfall is below 19,000. So we're going to go and take off and do that mission. So make sure we've got our pilot, donned in as our crew. We've got a whole set of parachutes, an extra antenna just in case. We've got some experiments aboard in case we end up somewhere new. So let's launch. So the embarrassing alternate turns out that this isn't the plane I've been doing things with. Yep, that's it. Stop bouncing. Get some control on. Check staging. Yep, we're good. Now, first things off, launch, and then immediately kill the engines. Apply a little bit of rudder. Try not to clip an hour and any of our empennage. Whoops. <laughs> um, revert flight, revert to launch. So that was what's called coming off the edge of the runaway badly. So let's turn around much more steeply this time. Oh, no, not full power. Kill the engines. This is going to go badly. It has indeed gone badly. Alright, revert flight. <laughs> let's go back to the space plane hangar. Alright, fine. Open. Let's try the 1A. Let's just double check that we've got center of mass, center of lift are very close together. Donned in. And launch. Alright, much smaller plane this time. Check your staging. <laughs> there. Right. <laughs> Build the engines, got my little bit of thrust. Now we should be able to wheel our way down onto the ground over there. Then I will apply the brakes. Come to a neat halt. Bring the map up. And we want the pitfall. So we need to activate navigation. And our location is where. Where do we need to go, game? Alright, over that way. Okay. That shouldn't be too hard if I was facing the right direction. But unfortunately, I've gone off the runway the wrong way. So, full power. Brakes off. 
don't need to worry about Kerbal Engineer. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. There we go. Get in the air and then we'll worry about finding the target. Nudge, 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 nudge. Alright. SES on. Full throttle. Let's hopefully we'll run out of grass before we need to take off. There we go. And this plane, apparently, is stable. So let's throttle down to half. Get us some altitude. And while you're busy climbing, I will set that as our destination. And we need to head over that way a bit. So, crew report near below that. So the aircraft appears to be pleasingly stable, which is good. So let's bring our heading around slowly. <laughs> By which I mean I'm just going to wobble it quite a bit until we are heading east. So there's the little marker over there I can see. That's where I'm falling out of the sky.
Most of the parts, but a couple bits of the landing gear, which we broke. You're ready for your next assignment. Nicely done. Thank you very much. So, let's have a quick check and see what other uh -huh. we've got. Temperature survey, tourists. Investigation dead structure. Look at that one later, I think. Um, I did note there's this thing to achieve the one. Test a heat shield well landed. That sounds like quite a bit easy. So what we'll do is we'll grab a probe body. Pyramid. Uh, what? I'm going to do that one. So there's the 
just eaten it basically with a suborbital flight that goes over MA5C, which we will now attempt to do. Check the staging, parachutes. We can actually have all the parachutes fire at once because they don't ping until they're safe. And then we can engine, separation, separation, engines. Alright, save and launch. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, first things first then. We will access navigation. So we know we need to be vaguely tilting that way as we go up. Alright, so we'll probably worry about getting over it once we've binned the boosters. But let's um, stay at that amount of throttle. We've got these guys to get us off the ground, and then we'll worry about trying not to go too quickly later on. Right. Three, two, one, away. I am back. All right. Let's turn the SAS on since we have a pilot. Control from here. little bit of rotation, so that when I pull up, I now know that I am heading. Alright, we're slowing down, so let's throttle up. Our current apoapsis height is 26 now, that's not high enough. We are high enough that as soon as it says we are in MO68, we should be fine. Just nudge it slightly that way. So we are flying towards it. Our wraps his height is getting there. I will lock that and put it over there. So I can just hit crew report when I'm at the appropriate moment. We are now scheduled to be suborbital. Let's have a quick look at our trajectory. Then what we will be doing is we will be burning a fair chunk of the rest of our fuel very flatly once we get up to a decent altitude. We've got an awful lot of control authority here because we've got an awful lot of reaction wheels. Right, I'm hoping that we are scheduled to go... No, we are not. All right. So let's point ourselves over this way a bit. Stage that engine. Going the wrong way. And now we are scheduled be going over there. Keep that. Are we over it or not? <laughs> Alright, that's... Alright, that's retrograde. I want... Prograde. And I'm going to do a big burn here. Anchor report. Nope, we missed it, apparently. Oh, yeah, we're now entering it. Crew report. Crew report. Keep. You're right. Good, good. So. We got the crew port we wanted from over there. We are now literally just gently suborbiting away. So the reason I did that burn at apoapsis is we like previously that coming down to the atmosphere too shallow does not end well. So I would like to point the engine. Hey, suborbital observational information. Indeed. Point it retrograde. 
hopefully we should slow down enough. <laughs> yep, we're now coming back into the atmosphere. Let's just quick supplies check. Yeah, we've got plenty of electric charge, plenty of control authority. So I'm reasonably happy that we should be able to keep our expendable engine butt first. We will not be popping any of the parachutes just yet. They're listed as... This would be a bad idea to deploy. So hopefully we'll start coming into the majority of the atmosphere soon. Don't really want to be going quite so straight down as we are. Do we want to get out of this alive? Let's just tweak these so that they come on as quickly as they possibly can. And as soon as they possibly can. <laughs> Alright. There's re entry. Nothing but the noise of fire. Not too noisy. No immediate temperature alerts. We are slowing down quite a bit. It's a bit steep. Steeper than I would like. I'm going to push the button now. So as soon as it's safe, the parachutes will pop. Just hoping that's sooner rather than later. Drogues away! And there's the rest of them. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so that was a steeper launch than I would like, but those drogues really do a good job slowing you down that extra 200 meters a second so your main parachutes can pop. You can't come down on them safely just by themselves, but they're better than nothing. And we've got a crew report from space, which would be nice. Didn't apparently need a pressure or a temperature report from space, but eh, you know. And you got to fly suborbital. You got to see what it was like outside of the atmosphere, didn't you, Arena? Apparently we can EVA if we want to. Not a particularly good idea. Alright, so you can see what they look like in the... Oh, that's kind of cute. I'll turn that off because it's probably burning process about. And gently we fall to the ground. 1,000 meters of the main parachute should pop completely. And watch our vertical speed drop to 4 meters a second. Apparently we could get an EVA report. I'm not that interested in it. It's speed time up. Uh, impact time at 12 seconds. It's falling very slowly, isn't it? Yeah, pretty sure that's running a bit slow. <laughs> that's not actually in the seconds and seconds. It's clipping along a bit slower than I thought it would be. But let's get it back down to the water. Kill the time warp. It's probably all the parachutes it's having to process. Get it down on the ground. Undo the time warp and we'll gently and gently, gently splash down, retrieving the engine and the fuel tank, which will save us a fair bit of money, particularly the engine, because, you know, they're expensive. So tourist flights suborbital seem to be a way of getting a fair bit of cash. Hey, we're down. Recover the vessel before I need to turn the SAS off and it flips over. Huzzah! So we've got 4.5 science, we've got a bit more science from that. Total science is 56. We've got a load of parts back, which was nice. No fuel. No experience gain for either of them. But we got multiple contract chosen. Can award for completing five or more contracts. Passenger transport or ribbon. Award for Kerbal's launching a vessel with tourists. Nice. Alright, so what I will probably do is I will warp time on a bit till it's day, so you can see a bit more, and I'll see you in a few moments. Bye for now.